It's not often I come across a game like This War of Mine by 11-Bit Studios and Galactic. It plays 1-6 to six players, takes 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 18 and up. And you are playing as the survivor in a war-torn country going through a civil war. You and up to three other characters are going to be bunkered down in a house that has basically been disheveled by nuclear bombs or just bombs in general, air raids, and your objective is to survive over a period of days before hopefully help arrives. Sadly, fatigue, hunger, misery, and depression are things that your character will experience throughout the game if you don't get the required supplies, needed items to board up your house, and of course there's also the risk of death because there are looters and people that you're going to come across throughout your night raids or night scavenging that might uh, basically have your character end up in an ill-foreseen a scenario. The game is a complex one and it contains a lot of components and I think we'll just go ahead and get started by explaining what you get in the game, how it's basically set up, and then of course the basic rundown of an, a single day phase and when we'll talk about my review for this game based on the hit board games or board game video game or app based game that you can find on steam and even the switch which is where i have it so to begin this game you're going to actually follow a rule booklet or a simple journal and it'll explain how the game takes place and you'll actually be reading this thing as you go through and explains how to play the game as you go through each of the different phases it'll show you the setup for the game and then it'll show you what each phase does throughout the game you're going to have like the morning the day phase the dusk phase the evening phase the scavenging phase the the night raid phase and of course the dawn and that's one full round and there's a ton of different rounds in this game as you progress uh, provided that you can manage to survive through all of them uh, basically survival is key in this game and if you can get to the end that way you'll win set the board out and there's two sides of the board one is dangerous and the other is insanely dangerous uh, you're trying to uh, basically survive in this house and the house is represented by the board in the game and that's 90 percent of the board in fact you're going to take certain cards like rubble and heaps and closed doors uh, you're going to take furniture and you're going to place them randomly throughout the house as your characters start in here they're going to be digging around and attempting to find unique resources or things they can use so not only for scavenging like maybe a shovel or a lockpick but also things to actually use to craft items such as for instance a gunsmith shop or a bed or a drain water collector that you'll then be build building and placing in the house after you've randomly selected all the cards and placed them down go ahead and set aside each of the decks and each of the decks has a specific uh space for it it'll tell you what type of deck it needs here's the visitors that you're going to hopefully encounter throughout the game you'll place them on the visitors stack of visitors cards in that area characters narrative fate colors so on and so forth you're also going to set your locations on the top left you'll draw three and you'll place them out in three different districts Basically, one's going to be closer, and the others are going to be farther and farther away, giving you less opportunity to stay out at night because you have to reach them. Uh, after you set up the entire board here, there's, of course, going to be the chapters and the final objectives, which is probably what you're going to do last. These are simply explained in the rules as to set them up, and then as you go through them, they'll tell you what you need to do to progress further. But these are what you need to accomplish throughout the game, and also the bad and good things that can happen to your characters. Place all your characters there and then of course each character has their own unique card their own unique token and they're going to have their own unique uh, illness hunger and other type of tokens that can affect them thus allowing them to have less actions as they progressively spiral downwards either into depression illness or hunger there's also going to be starting resources. You'll get wood, you'll get water, lockpick, and a shovel, and some other miscellaneous items that you kind of just started with in your pockets, basically. And you'll set aside all the rest of the tokens in the game. There's a ton of tokens in this game, as you can see, and you'll be hopefully gathering them as you go on your night raids, uh, or night, not night raids. You'll have night raids attack you, but as you go on your scavenging missions to find certain things in the game. And you're just going to go through the steps of the game, and I'll explain them now. The first phase of the game is the morning phase, and in the morning phase, you're going to be taking the chapter or event cards on the top of the deck, reading them, doing what they say, and then attempting to complete them. And you'll usually need to complete them by the end of the day, or it'll be something that happens instantaneously. They're usually bad, but sometimes they can be good. After you've completed them, you'll move on to the next phase, which is the day phase. In the day phase, each character will get assigned three actions. However, if they're suffering from things like hunger, illness, fatigue, misery, and so on and so forth, 
for each of the black dots associated with each character based on their negative effects uh, you will lose an action for each of those characters so if you have three black marks or holes on a character they won't be able to do anything which can be detrimental to your gameplay so make sure you feed them make sure that they're not depressed or hungry that kind of a thing even thirsty of course and uh, then you're able to use the, the actions of the characters. Most of the actions are pretty self-explanatory. When you move around the area, which you can move around freely, you can move up and down and left and right, downstairs, so, so on and so forth. When you come across a hand that is red, you will do an action in that area. It could be on the board or it could be located on a card. And finally, you can actually build fittings or ideas, I should say. These guys here, I think it's fittings, yeah, fittings. Uh, and you'll be able to build things like a deadfall trap, a stove, a radio, metal shop, a bed, so on and so forth. And each of them is an action. And once you finish your actions, whether it be to use your resources to build something, uh, searching through a heap to acquire some unique resources, or having to dig through rubble, thusly allowing you to get to uh, new places or new areas in the house, you'll pass for each of the characters. And you're playing together, working cooperatively with everybody else in the game. You can play with as many players as you would like, realistically. Six is the max, in my opinion, but you could play more, I guess. There's no reason why you couldn't. Then you'll move on to the next phase. Dusk being the next phase, you'll need to actually feed and make your characters drink if possible. When you feed them, you'll lower their hunger. If, of course, you don't feed them, their hunger will raise and you'll drink. And if you don't drink with each character, then you're going to roll a die, this wonderful black die here. Based on your roll, you could increase your misery or your fatigue, uh, which is also a negative status effect. Hopefully you can feed as many people as you can possibly need to. And of course, you're also going to want to, to uh, give them some water if possible. And then you move on to the next phase. So evening has come and each of your characters are now going to either need to sleep either on the floor or in a bed, which will hopefully lower their fatigue if it's in a bed. They can guard the front door of the house, and you're going to need to do that, because basically if you don't, you'll lose the game. So just a heads up, it's a spoiler, sort of, but you don't want to lose the game early, so make sure you have somebody on guard. And finally, you can have any number of characters also go out and scavenge. And when they go out and scavenge, they'll have a certain inventory space that they can hold, and the more that you bring out, the more you can scavenge, but the more tired they're going to be when they come back the next day. After you finish assigning each of the characters one of the four positions, you'll move on to the next phase. The next phase is the scavenging phase, where after you've assigned your characters uh, to go ahead and go out and scavenge, you're going to then select a location. And there's three available, but those will be removed and replaced as the game progresses. And if you want to go to a farther location, you'll get less cards for your exploration deck. And if you come to a closer place, you'll get more. But you might have already been to a certain place, and you might want to actually traverse to a new one. But of course, the farther you go, the less time you have, thusly the less cards you get in exploring, and more cards is always better. So if we were to go to Old Town, which is here, we would then go ahead and take 14 cards from this deck here, set aside the rest of them, and use this as our explore deck. We can also go ahead and equip ourselves, bring cards, bring uh, tokens and whatnot, maybe like a shovel or a lockpick that we may need as we go throughout our scavenging hunt uh, to help our characters. Remember, whatever we bring, we might want to bring back, and they have weight to them, and our characters are only allotted a certain number of weight. And then from there, we'll flip over cards, do what they say, make the choices aloud, and utilize our wonderful book of scripts that uh, will basically give us the story of the game, our specific game, which will change every time for each unique game. And you're going to come across a ton of unique events that are usually going to be bad, sometimes good, and sometimes, sometimes even great. When you finish your deck from the scavenging run, that is going to end your scavenging phase, pushing you into the night raid phase. Or you're going to draw a night raid, and you're going to do what it says. Usually it's going to be bad things, like looters, for instance, and they're going to try and hurt you. And hopefully you've equipped your characters who are guarding with weapons, and you'll be rolling die to attempt to fight them off. This could be used during the scavenging phase, and of course always the night phase. And if you secure without having to deal with too much bad stuff, maybe you won't take any injuries, but otherwise you may, and your characters might also die based on what you roll and what you have equipped for your characters. After you finish the Night Raid phase, you're going to add cards to the Night Raid and Residence deck, basically making it more challenging as the game goes on, and you'll push on to the last phase, which is the Dawn phase. You'll return all your scavengers back to the house, bringing back as much as you can possibly carry with you. Then you're going to go ahead and assign any medicine that you may need to for characters who may be suffering from injuries. You'll draw a fate card and you'll resolve it and they'll all do different things. And then you're going to go ahead and draw two narrative actions, choose one of them and utilize them. These are always 
generally speaking, good. And you're only going to get mm, a couple throughout the entire game. So make sure you choose the correct ones that are going to make it count, and it'll help you throughout the game. After you finish the dawn phase, that's going to trigger the ending of the day, and you'll push on back to the morning phase. However, if you don't want to, you can stop. Maybe you need to take a breather or whatever, and you can save the game. And they have a save sheet that you can actually write down all the things on the board, all your characters and their fatigue, so that you can come back and play again at another time. But otherwise, you'll just keep going throughout the entire game, playing through all of the cards. And of course, the objectives that you'll need to complete after each of the chapters. And if you can do so, you'll gain a reward, otherwise you'll suffer a penalty. And then of course, the final objective after the third chapter, which this one is just survive. At least one character from the starting group of characters that you have needs to survive till the end of the game. Uh, and if you can do that, you'll win the game. <laughs> I've never completed this game for various reasons, it's very challenging and also can be quite depressing. Uh, but that is the game and that is how you play this War of Mine. Let's talk about my review. There's not a lot of board games that I can think of that actually make me depressed as I play them. <laughs> and in this war of mine, it does that. Now, I played the video game beforehand, and it is very true to the video game. If you've played this war of mine, and you want a tabletop game that simulates more than one player playing with you, or in fact, the way I like to do it, especially now after playing a few times, uh, I like to be the narrator, I like to explain the game to other people and let them kind of have the events unfold. Uh, allowing them to kind of have this journey that they don't have to go ahead and read the scripts and whatnot. It's somebody else reading to them, kind of like a DM and the other players. I basically explain the story to them as they make choices for their characters. Uh, but otherwise, the game booklet will tell you to switch players each and every time uh, one of the events or one of the uh, phases of the game ends. The dawn phase is over, now pass to Kali. After the dawn phase, it's the morning phase, now it's John's turn. And you just rinse and repeat uh, that way. And the book tells you, gives you good examples of how to do that. Let's start with quality first before we get into any more of the storyline. Now, the quality of the game is excellent. It comes with a ton of unique tokens. All of them uh, have different like types of, of, of like manufacturing quality. You have like the water tokens or droplets, which are gonna be see-through. You got the wood pieces. Uh, which is a nice little like wood wood like plastic a bunch of tokens for all the different guns and weapons uh, it just really works for me if holding all these different pieces it feels like my inventory is increasing or when i'm losing them it definitely feels uh strangely um, disappointing every time i have to use items for either feeding myself or building a new piece of I a new item that i want to build uh, but there's also a sense of accomplishment as well. Uh, there's a bunch of different dice you'll use throughout the game, and they're all etched dice, which is nice, and the better ones are obviously the ones with weaponry, like the guns, followed by handheld weapons, and then finally your fists, which are terrible. <laughs> Um, all the cards are really well made, the miniatures are excellent as well, and the book is really easy to read and go through. Um, I didn't have a trouble with the book of scripts, uh, other than of course the narrative aspects of it, and the fact that it has multi-sided board, um, and it looks like a house, and as you pull things apart and put them on, it feels like you're building house each and every time in a new and unique way. Uh, overall quality of this game is uh, not, even, not, not just satisfactory, but excellent in my opinion. The next thing I want to talk about is, of course, <laughs> the story. The story of this game is one of, of sadness, and uh, it's one of like loss and, and hardships, trials and tribulations that you and the players around you're going to go through. You're going to experience this game. It's, it's definitely a game, because you are there's an objective to it, but it's more of an experience. This game is good, like Schindler's List the movie is good, or like The Pianist is an excellent movie. They're great, but after leaving it, there's a, a feeling of like sadness or like not, you're, you're just, you feel, it's kind of like, you know, you, you're inspired, you, you kind of have a, a little bit of an, under, an understanding, like just an ever slightly bit of understanding of what people in these situations have to go through. Uh, me living here in California, in America, uh, having even experienced a war, never on my own soil. Specifically, I've seen it across, I've heard of it, but never actually kind of been part of one. And this is a narrative of what war is like. This is what war must feel like for those people out there. They're living in it, you know, just, just a little tasting of it though is, is all I got and it was enough to make me upset um, and and I just feel for people like that this really made me think about the history of war and what it's like to be, have go through certain countries even still into this day how how 
how much, <laughs> how, how damaging mentally and physically it must be to have to live in a time period where this still exists, where people are afraid to leave the house, but they have to, to save their kids or save their relatives. It's just overall a really disturbing and even upsetting theme, but it's, it's upsetting in a good way. Like it feels good to go through the game and understand what people had to go through. One of the stories I'll never forget in this game is I, I scavenged with one of my characters who was like a beefy, broody dude, and I knew he was gonna carry a lot of stuff, and he came across this, uh, this, this like, it's like a hair salon. But instead of people, the women doing hair for other women, the women were in there getting prosthetic faces to make themselves look ugly and like disheveled and like doing their hair all nasty. Do you know why? To keep the people that are outside in this ravaged landscape, the males specifically, from doing nasty, dirty, terrible things to these women, assaulting these women. And and I came across and the choice was I could either, either leave them or I could go in and steal all the donations that the clientele had given these hairstylists and these prosthetic makeup designers. And I could steal all their stuff and take it back home. Well, normally the thought process is well, I'd never steal from these people, right? But at home, all of my friends and family are dying. It, some some choices are, are, are uh, it's you, I don't know what to choose, you know, and, and some get, sometimes in this game I just stopped playing because I didn't want to make certain choices. It was it was too much for me. And I don't know what that makes me, but I, it was it was rough. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not good. The storyline is excellent. It's amazing. This is one of the best storyline style games I've played in a long time. And if you're okay with a dark, gritty theme and you're, you're willing to make choices that uh, are are so impactful in the real world, let alone just this game, like, <laughs> it gives you a sense of, like, what the reality is in, of these type of, of, of scenarios that exist outside of maybe, maybe your bubble. Uh, <laughs> but yes, there are a ton of different stories in the game. You're not going to go through this book once, twice, three times. I haven't even gotten through maybe a quarter of this book, and I've played through the game with other players as the narrator at least like nine, ten times. And each time the game was fulfilling, interesting, players left not super excited or happy, but like, wow, a story you'll never forget for sure. The story of uh, this war of mine is impactful, historical, and overall, like, riveting. Now for a little bit of a lighter topic, the artwork. The artwork is dark, it's gritty, it works well for the game. The character's artwork is excellent as well. It gives you um, just little things I liked about it. The fact that the character cards have the actual character models on them so I can find them quickly. The character bases as well as a nice little touch. The boards that are different, unique in their own ways. It comes with additional, um, additional rules. Uh, explaining like the, the last night and there's of course expansions to this game as well if you can even get through this game here um, especially with the extra unique items and whatnot and of course as you place down unique locations it does feel like you're building the house and the artwork does a great job of that um the, the last thing is that this game is a challenge it's very very hard it's very unlikely you're going to beat the game and if you do beat the game Good job. Uh, it, it's it's something that's hard to not only get through in a story sense, but also in a gaming sense, making these choices. Sometimes it's random. Sometimes you just get unlucky, and that's kind of how life is too. And normally in a game that involves a lot of luck, I'm not, I'm not for it. But in this game, it just makes sense. You're not ever going to be able to predict when an air raid is going to launch a bunch of bombs across your house or when people come in, destroy your building, steal your stuff, and then the cold air is getting in, freezing you and your family. Uh, it's one of those things that, that's life. Nothing is ever gonna be like, you're never gonna be able, as much control as you might think you have. In the end, a lot of things are kind of up to fate or chance, and this game kind of portrays that in a good way. Whereas giving you the choices is nice, and it does that a lot in this game. Sometimes things just happen, and you have to deal with them as best as you possibly can. For this war of mine, I would give it my, it's going to get my seal of approval. It is an excellent game. It's going to be a niche game for people who like narrative driven games. People who don't mind the idea of winning or losing in a game, but just want to have an experience. People who don't mind a dark and gritty game with stories like the one I explained to you previously, where you're going to have to make hard choices. And if you like like everything I've explained in this game, if you think it's interesting, if you like the video game version of this game, uh, this is definitely a pick up. This is one of those things now you can experience the video game with friends and family. It's something that you can kind of give them an idea of what it's like uh, or what it might be like in one of these type of scenarios. Uh, this being completely like 
uh, not realistic world. This is a different. This is like a different place. It's, it's, it's like Grafskanaskan or you know, it's, it's somewhere else. But you do feel a huge sense of realism with it. But anyway, <laughs> I don't have much else to say with this game because it's just it, it's just a lot to process. And when make I bought this game a long time ago, and it was really hard to want to make a video review for this game just because I didn't know what to say. And I still kind of don't, as you can probably see. Yes, it's a good game. Yes, you should pick it up if you like this type of a narrative game. But just beware that it's not a game that you're going to walk away and think, wow, that was a fun game. I really enjoyed myself. Did you guys all have fun? <laughs> well, yes, but but no as well. <laughs> this, this war of mine. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that subscribe button if you will. You can also go ahead and check out the game This War of Mine with the expansions. I'll have a link down below in the description for you guys to pick it up if it sounds like it's something interesting for you. And maybe at some point I'll even do a, a, a live stream. I think I did one a while ago, but it was cut short and had like technical issues. Um, and of course, if you would like, you can also check out our Patreon. Support us for a buck every month. It helps us with our streams, with our equipment, and with our continuation of doing this kind of stuff. I appreciate you guys watching, of course, and uh, on our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST with me, Callie, Josh, and Max, and others, especially even designers coming to play games just like this one here. Thank you guys so much. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.